So let's get started with Fastify. Um, Fastify is a Node.js framework for making REST APIs. Their core focus is uh, creating an, ef an efficient server with extensions via hooks, plugins, and decorators. I've personally used it before for some projects and it's quickly become my favorite web framework. So let's get to it. For instantiating our project, I'm going to do the uh, yarn in it. If you do not want to use yarn, but just standard npm, you can do that. It's pretty much the same. Uh, for the index file, I want to go with uh, index.ts, like this. And now we have our package.js. Let's see if that's perfect. Um, let's add some dependencies. I want to do this project with TypeScript. So let's add this for dev. And let's add uh, another dependency for this test purpose as well. Um, this is for running the actual program. And let's also add your, uh, what's it called, Fastify. Like this. So when this is done, uh, we have our package JSON and some dependencies installed in the node modules. Let's add a folder source and add our index file here. So um, let's now create our TypeScript file like this. And we now have the TypeScript configuration file here. You can adjust it as you like. I'm just going to use the default for this purpose. Whenever, now we have the index.ts and we can start with importing Fastify from Fastify. And so for the first line, we're going to do it very easily by instantiating the actual application. We can do it like this, uh, Fastify, and just call it. Uh, if you do want to, you can add some settings in here, such as uh, logger, but I'm just going to keep it simple like this. So for the most basic test case, we can just add a route uh, like this and set the path as the index and just add the callback. I'm going to do the shorthand like this, the error function. And we can just return hello world. And this is a string, of course. So when this is done, we have to make sure the app is actually listening on a port. So we can do port 3000 and even do the host as well. Don't have to, I'm just going to do it. So now we have the the most basic setup here in our index file. Let's go to our package JSON and we can add in the scripts we want to define. We can just do a start uh, for running in the development environment. And for the dependency I added, TS node, we can run our index file like this. So when this is done, I can do yarn run start. This should instantiate our program. And when this is up and running, we can do localhost. Oh, sorry. You can do like this, and it's been called. So in the terminal, we do not have any text at all. I think this might be because we do not have the logger here. We just say true and restart it. There we go. Now we can see in the console that we have activity going on. So now it's up and running. Let's do some 
a little bit more advanced um, because this is not really a real test case if you want to do anything more advanced. So let's start by adding some more folders. We can do routes, we can do controllers. So for the controller we can add something like hello controller and the routes can basically be hello route. Oh, I need the extension as well. Like this. And for defining the... Let's do the, the routes first. So I'm gonna make a export uh, function here called main hello main routes and we can do we can add the routes here and by setting the uh, fastify application here we can also do just app and say fastify instance so we can pass in the application and add the routes we want so if you say app and get we can use just like before in the index file. Um, we can remove this and add it in here, basically. And then this is this will do the exactly the exact same. So we can add some more and maybe change it to hello. Maybe this to world just to get some different scenarios going. So when this is done, we can do this differently by removing this callback function and actually make a method over here, a function to um, to put into as, as the callback function. So let's put it in just for the test purpose, a name here, um, and return as we did before the hello world. And let's oh, let's just copy this name and put it in here. And of course, it doesn't know it, so we need to import it from the controller file. And now, whenever this is called, we call this function. So we can do this again for the other ones. We can just uh, let's put some numbers here and add them here as well. Oh, we renamed this one. So like this. And now let's just change these up a little bit. So for the very first one, let's just keep it simple. This is just the very basic. For the second one, we can do some palm stuff. Um, what if you want to call hello with an ID? We can do it like this. So if you want to do this with an ID, we need to put in a type here. So we can do an object with palm and say params is going to contain ID as the type of number. And for our controller, we can take this and create an object here and call the handler with this object. This is going to allow us to do more configurations such as you can see schemer, for example, or even adding pre-handlers, something to run before our actual handler. But for this test, we can just do it like this. Um, so I can actually copy this part, and go in here to our controller, and for all of these controllers actually, we could add the 
request, which is fastify request. And there's going to be a response, which is fastify reply, it's actually called. And for this test purpose up here, we do not want to use it, but for this second one, I'm just going to put it in here as well. Whenever we navigate to this request, we want to access the palms, see what do we actually have here. So it doesn't know actually here, but we can add it. So I did copy it before, didn't I? Let's do it again and add it here. So now we're telling that this request is going to contain the params of ID number. So if I hold my cursor here, we can actually see what params contains. And for the test purpose of this, we can maybe just replace this here. So this will be an object of ID, or we can add the ID specifically here. So let's uh, let's try and test this. Let's reboot the program, pull up our browser, and we can navigate to hello. This is not going to find anything because I put in hello and the ID has to be there to match this route. So let's add one, two, three, four. Okay, so of course I haven't actually called the main routes from here. So to be able to do this, I need to instantiate a function called start. Um, I'll do it like this and say stored, call this, and we can put in the main routes with the app, and we can do this line in here. And the reason we do this is because we cannot await a function at the very top layer. So here, we cannot do await uh, stored, for example, because Oh, let's do async. This is not even called here. So now we can see we cannot do this at the top level. So we have, don't have to wait await this, but we do have to await these. So in here we can control how we want to do it. Let's add this as well. Perfect. So. Now we should be able to restart and see what happens. Perfect. So if I change this, it's going to return this as we expected here. So for the for the third controller, we can do something like it. Um, let's take this part and change this to query string. And say test, we want it to be a string. And for our response, we want this to be we can we can work with the response and say, hey, we want the status of uh, let's say 200. And we can send the body of the, the string we got uh, from the query string. So let's instantiate test with query string dot test. But what if we don't have the string? Um, let's we want to ex to actually validate this part. So let's do the same as here above one. We can do handler. We can do schema. Uh, let's do some line breaks. So we have schema, we can add this as an object to work with. And now we need to define what do we want to, to, 
to validate. So here we're going to work with a query string. And this query string is going to be type object. And the properties of the query string uh, also going to be the tests, uh, which is a type of string. Oh, this is a string instead. And what in this query string is required? We can do required then and say array test and again for let's fix this format here put in the comma we want to do this again so we want to do query string just query string I think uh, and do tests string like this. That seems very wrong. Didn't I just do it here? Oh, I need to put in, and I need to wrap it inside an object here. Like this. We can, uh, we can test it out. So, Let's restart the application, go to our browser, we want to navigate to a new one, let's do the same one, like this, let's put in world, like this. So the query string must have required property test, and by adding the query string test, we can do my test string. It's going to to return it as we specified. So these are the very basics of Fastify. Um, if you want to add something like the error handler, we can do this as well. Um, it's a little bit different. Um, so let's try to make this real quick. We can do error which is most likely a type of error. We can do request for a fastify request. Oh, yeah, that's the wrong one. Request and we can do the reply. Let's just say response, fastify reply. And in here we can maybe console log the actual error, see what's going on and send back a default answer. Um, you can do whatever format you you want. Um, actually, could we could maybe do like response status for nine and say send this body back. Oh, this is the wrong method. We want to do set error handler like this. So we can do. Actually, let's go back to our first symbol endpoint and do throw new error this is my test error and re start the application with these changes we can now go back and say hey, this is still working and if we navigate to the error one we get this part so yeah that's pretty much it for this video if you enjoyed Leave a like, comment, whatever, and uh, stay tuned for more.